Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Gamerpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton. Today's episode, we're talking about how variety is the death of your business. Now, you might have heard that variety is the spice of life, right? You know, you think variety streamers, they get to play whatever game they want. They get to try different things. They get to test different audiences. They get to put themselves out there and just kind of enjoy it. They're sitting there playing games they like, not being beholden to a specific type of audience. And here's the thing. I have yet to meet a true variety streamer who actually was any successful, all right? And um, there, I'm, there has to be. I'm sure there has to be. However, almost every single person who is at the tippy top of the streaming ladder, the content creation ladder, they usually almost always, with very few exceptions, focus on one thing. They're focused on one thing. It may not be a game, all right? I never said a game. I said that it's focused on one thing. And that one thing is the thing that they're gonna come back to in between their various ex escapades elsewhere, okay? So you may be seeing, as an example, I'm, I'm talking about streamers specifically, but um, this applies just as well to businesses, all right? If you're talking about a streamer and they're like, oh, I try this game and 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 this game, and this game. like they don't they don't have anything they go back to, their audience doesn't have anything that anchors them to them most likely, unless they have some sort of mission that they're they're on or they like they uh, have some sort of like personality quirk that's a it's totally and vastly different than everybody else. But for the most part, most content creators, most streamers are exactly the same. You're not much different from everybody else. I hate to break your, your feelings there. Sorry. It is the way it is. Most, there's millions of you, millions and millions of content creators. You think you're going to be different from most of them? No, you're sitting there playing video games. So how can you be different? Well, you can have a mission. I've heard, I've talked about that often. You make your content about something greater than yourself, greater than your audience, greater than the games you're playing. You find something that'll make people want to follow you on a mission that you're on, okay? The other thing is the personality quirk. You can just be so weird and wacky and zany that you've become a personality. Think like Hulk Hogan, right? Hulk Hogan, just by virtue of being Hulk Hogan, got people to follow him. And that's how, that's how he built his following is by being a personality. Now, if, if you don't have one of those two things, you need a home base. You need something that people can come back to time and time again and expect kind of the same thing. So for most of the streamers, content creators at the tippy top, I'm talking about the ones with tens of millions and millions and millions of followers, okay? They all have something that they return to. It's the kind of the, the primary thrust of their content. So for like Asma Gold or Asma, some Asma, so whatever, um, it was Warcraft and he's like slowly switching to Final Fantasy, right? A bunch of the Warcraft streamers are now switching over to Final Fantasy 14 because Blizzard and Activision Blizzard made some major missteps, but that's all right. They, they had a thing, they focused on one thing and now they're switching that one thing because the one thing they were working on isn't isn't as good as it was, but you know, um, I, I know guys who've done like Assassin's Creed content and they'll make a ton of Assassin's Creed content, not just gameplay content, but like where are the secrets, how to get the most experience, where to get the best gear, where to like get the most money, where to do this, where to like do that. And they just break down every little single aspect of that game they possibly can because that's their thing. And the people who are interested in that thing are going to watch their channel because they're breaking down every single little aspect. And, you know, like I play World of Warcraft, like I, I, I've loved World of Warcraft since I started playing it back in 2005 and I started playing in 2005 and I, um, I would go to all the different forums and I would check out um, all the calculators and I would check out all the, like way back in the day, we didn't have like half what we have now, but like all the, the theory crafting stuff and we would run parses and spreadsheets and I, I wanted to play. And so I was diving in to figuring out how to be the best at this game I could. And it ended up being, I was in high end guilds, right? But there are people just like me with Warcraft with other games. 
who want to dive in, who want to conquer this, who want to make it the thing that they are the best at. And if you can figure out where a pool of these people are, you can make the thing that they're looking for. All you got to do is let them know it exists and they're going to consume it because they want to improve themselves. And if you're able to show them something that helps them on their journey, they're going to consume your content. This is why variety is the death of your business, not the spice of life. Because if you're a business owner, just say you're selling something, you make a product for a specific type of purchaser, okay? You don't just make stuff for everybody. You know, like Walmart, right? Walmart sells product to everybody, right? No, Walmart has a very specific market segment that it targets. It is the lower socioeconomic bracket, okay? Like the, the bottom of the bottom barrel. Walmart is trying to sell cheap Chinese stuff, the same cheap Chinese stuff you get at pretty much any other store. They're selling that for as low as they possibly can in order to get you into the store. And they figure if we just get enough people in, sure, we make like two pennies per product, but those two pennies per product add up when people are filling their carts full of this stuff and pushing it to the checkout line. And there's a person behind them with a full cart, a person behind them with a full cart. Those pennies start to add up. Okay. And they'll have other products in there that they actually mark up that aren't the big sellers. They don't sell as much, but they know people kind of need it. And so they'll make their money elsewhere in the store. That's the market segment they want to sell to is the lowest bracket. There's then there's, um, like Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce isn't looking to sell to somebody who has a part-time night security job that pays minimum wage. And that's the only income they have, right? That person isn't going to be affording a Rolls Royce most likely anytime soon. They target a different market segment. Okay. If Rolls Royce came out with the, the vehicle that was going to be priced for and have the accommodations made for somebody who was a part-time night security that was paid minimum wage, I can bet you Rolls-Royce would go out of business because Rolls-Royce would be trying to break into a market that it's not looking to really be a part of, trying to sell a product that's inferior based on its own criteria. And customers of Rolls-Royce are going to look at this and go, you know, why is it that the car I'm getting is this much when the car you're selling over here is this much and it's junk? Like, if this is the kind of junk you're willing to make, how can I trust that the quality of my thing is going to look good? It, they're so vastly different in these market segments that that business cannot, it cannot have a split personality like that. It has to separate the two entirely. Can't be under the same roof. Okay. You, your business, your content is not different. You have some market segment that you currently are attractive to. You may not know who those people are. You may not be getting any viewers. You may not be getting any purchasers. You may not be getting anybody into your business yet. But that doesn't mean you're not presently attempting to target a certain market segment. Okay. You may not even be consciously aware of it, but you are. And it could be you're just not marketing to those people properly. It is incredibly difficult to market to a specific market segment if you are constantly changing the thing that you're putting out there that you're looking to get them to consume. And that is the point of what I'm trying to talk about here is if I am constantly changing the game that I'm playing every single day, a different game, there's no, there's no sticking thing that's going to get someone who wants to come back because gamers... There, there's no such thing as gamers. We're all gamers, right? Yeah. We all like, you know, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, right? 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 No. No. You might like Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I like World of Warcraft. He likes Rocket League. She likes, you know, Dead by Daylight. Like, and that's the game they care for. That's the game they want to consume content on. Very, very few people are true generalists who are like, I like anything. Well, they're, they exist, yeah, but they're very, very small. If when push comes to shove, people have favorites. So pick a favorite, stick with it. Be, it's okay to have a little bit of variety as long as you have a home base that people know you're going to come back to. But you can get really good at this one thing. As we all know, like in, in the content creating, streaming, even business worlds, if you're not communicating with the people who are communicating with you, you're failing as a business owner. So if you're a business owner, you're selling, maybe you got like a land center, right? Uh, a, like a game center. 
And people come in and they like, hey, this is awesome. And they tag you on social media and like, this place was the best. And you're like, oh, hey, cool post. And then you put it down your phone and you don't like reply and thank that person. That's on you because that person went out of their way to talk about how great you were and you weren't willing to thank them. All right. Same thing in the streaming world, right? Con, you know, you're a content creator you're sitting there playing the game. Somebody pops into your chat and like, and they start chatting. If you ignore that person, it's no wonder you're going to have a dead chat because people wanted to talk to you and you weren't willing to do it. You have to engage with the audience. So when you create content that's kind of revolves around one topic or idea, one game, one product, one business, and you make that the sole thing you focus on, you're going to get to know it really quickly. Like you're going to become super familiar with it very, very quickly to the point that you're not even going to have to think about the answers. Like someone's going to ask you a question, like off the top of your head, oh yeah, yeah, right? No real consideration. You're not going to have to go look up resources or anything like that, which means you can now put a lot of your effort into the marketing side, the engagement side, getting involved with your audience because you know anything that they're going to ask about the game. You know how to play the game. You know how to create the content. You know how to whatever it is with your business, right? You know it. You know it. And you know you know it. Once you know you know it, it makes it really easy to tell people you know it, know it because you got to talk about it. And that is the secret. That's the key to getting authority and growing a true following because you're going to be seen as someone who knows what they're doing. And whether it's a game or a business, you're going to be seen as someone who knows what they're doing. And once you have the confidence in yourself that you know it, like I know this, right? People see that and people follow leaders. They're followers for a reason. So you are a leader and you're going to be able to be the Pied Piper just sitting there playing your flute mute because you don't even have to think about playing it. It's just going to come out and they're going to follow. So that's what I wanted to say today. Man, I was super energetic on this one. Um, remind you, organization is the enemy of sloth. Don't just pick something. Right? It's very tempting just start something and then see how it goes. And then if it doesn't go so well, switch in the future. But that doesn't work out because if you switch in the future, you're going to lose the people who were following you for the thing that they're currently following you for. And now you have to start all over and you do this a couple times. And the people who were actually there because they liked you, not just the game you were playing, um, they've watched your audience grow and then completely collapse and grow and completely collapse. And they go, man, like this person doesn't know what they're doing and they're going to bounce too. It's Take some time. It's okay to slow down. Life is not hustle, hustle, hustle. It's not grind, grind, grind. I, I really dislike the, the phrase, you know, put the nose to the grindstone. Because what, all I think when I think of that is you sit there and you get a bloody nose. And when you look up, you don't know where you're at because you've been working so hard with your nose down. You don't know what's going on. Figure things out first. Do some market research. Figure out how big is the audience? How many people watch? How engaged are they? How many other competitors do you have? How, uh, what kinds of products could you create? Who can you partner with? How do you raise your profile? How do you market all this stuff? Figure this stuff out like it's a true business because it is. And you figure this out. You put into uh, practice practical plans and do, do, to achieve achievable results and you're going to achieve them. It's not difficult. I've done it here. I, this is a case. To, I started with nothing on this show. And like, I'm now entering into partnerships. I've had business deals. I've got business, uh, real business deals. And I've done doing this a, a year and a half. And I didn't leverage any of my connections. I leveraged nothing on this show. I started with nothing to prove you can do it too. All right. You can. And all you got to do is create a good story, make yourself look good, and then put yourself out there until enough people see you and are able to resonate with you or your mission to the point that they want to follow you. Do that enough. You get enough followers. They start to hand you money. The followers that hand you money then pay for the marketing that's going to bring more people in. And before you know it, you're growing and you have freedom. That's what I'm trying to teach you here. And so this topic may sound like, a, oh, but I want to be a variety streamer, Brad. Best of luck. Don't be just a gamer. Be a gamerpreneur.